Welcome again. In this video, we'll have a look at how to build the product lifecycle and label it using Excel. Okay, I've just brought up a fairly bland uh, Excel spreadsheet. And our goal is to construct something similar to this where we have uh, a product lifecycle curve, uh, some products labeled, and the various stages identified. Okay, so that's what we're going to work towards. I'll just get rid of this graph. I'll put it to the side actually. Okay, so we're going to make something like that. Okay, what we start with is how many positions do you want? How many products do you want to be able to, to map? So about I've just put 20 there. Um, and then we've got to construct something that looks like the product life cycle curve. So I've just made up some numbers. Now I'm going to leave the product one blank at this moment, but I'm just going to highlight a blank column because I'll use that later when I put the product names in and the product life cycle curve. Go to insert, uh, go to line, and I'll get something that looks like that, which is sort of my shape, but not exactly. So the first thing we need to do is just play around with the numbers to get something smoother happening. Uh, so maybe I'll turn that into 95 and maybe this one here I'll make that 95 as well okay so what I'm going to do is play around with the particular shape that you're looking for okay so you just play around with variations of it I'll do that uh, while I'm doing this for you just pause the video and provide these numbers for you separately on the on the website but you can see the the initial approach so sometimes we want a, a very fast curve and sometimes we want a very low growing curve so depending on your needs okay I've just played around with the numbers manually till I've got a curve somewhat resembling what I'm after okay obviously I've got a uh, a title there that doesn't make sense so I would just then just change that into whatever I want to call the particular chart you can call it whatever you like that can just go there okay I need to do some modifications here I need to get rid of that because that's meaningless so I just click and delete now I probably don't want grid lines or numbers down the side because that's immaterial so I click on the graph to bring up the chart menu have a look at the menu there it's got design layout format if I click off the chart it disappears. If I click back on the chart, it brings it back up. Okay, so I can go to, to layout and get rid of the grid lines. So grid lines, none. We don't need that. Um, the axis, vertical axis, I really don't need it. Or I can just show, uh, have, have a simple line there if I wanted to, which I'll do that mechanically in a second. one so I've got something like that now I want to put in uh, the stages and the product names so I've got a, an idea of where they will fall okay so I'm going to make put it, product a doesn't matter what it is put it there maybe product B is going to sit here product C And then product D. Okay, so I'm just putting some random products. You, you name them. Okay, they haven't come up. So what we need to do is click on our chart. Brings up the data. I go into layout. I go to data labels. I go to more options. And instead of having the value, I want the category name. This will be the category name here. And I, I normally have it centered. So what we have now is each of those products being placed where I think I want them. If I go, oh, gee, A shouldn't really be there, it should be there, I can just cut it and uh, move it down. Okay, and, and wherever I put it relative to the product life cycle, I can also physically move it. I click on it once, they all come up. If I click on it a second time, I've got it by itself and I can just move it somewhere if it's overlapping you know for example we've got another product here so 
sorry about the spelling, product E. See, there's sort of an overlap size. I, I, can, I can make the, the chart bigger, which may help. Or I might just have to fractionally move that, double click it, and then just move it down. Okay, as simple as that. Okay, so if I want to put in the actual stages, what I need to do is click on the chart, go to insert, put a line in, for example. Okay. Because I've clicked on the chart first, that line is going to stay there. I can move the chart around, the line is there. If I simply click outside, I'm now on the worksheet, I go to insert a line. What I'm doing is actually inserting it on the worksheet, not on the chart. So if I do that and then move it or go to pay, copy and paste it, it stays where it is. It's actually on the worksheet. So if I have anything I want on there, I have to click on the chart first. I then go to insert whatever I want. So a textbook box. So I might put growth here. That would be the growth stage. Okay, I can then uh, play around with the, uh, the formatting of, of that particular uh, shape, for example, and just make that uh, centered and centered. So that sits in there. Make sure I'm click clicking on the chart. Insert any sort of shapes if I want a different sort of shape. You know, a bit more serious one there. Again, all these things will stay on the chart, uh, etc. Okay, so just remember that little tip. And that way I can copy and paste this into PowerPoint or into a, a Word document. It all stays together. At this stage, we don't have any uh, access in there. You could either go and use the built-in functionality of Excel. Um, often what I prefer to do is actually go in to insert a shape, an arrow in this case. Okay, and put it there. I just find that a little bit easier. I can play around with the formatting, um, play around with the color if I wanted to, etc. And obviously I can then copy and put another one on the side. So I just do that quickly. So they're identical. Let's quickly adjust that. And then I can just click on the chart and I again would copy these text boxes There's three of them there, okay. And basically, I would then put in decline. There's another one here. But by copying, I make sure I've got the formatting the same for each box. Maturity, and this would become introduction, of course. Okay, so I might put this up here, etc. I'll get rid of that particular one. I'll copy these these ones here, these lines. Okay, they're coming over here because they're on the chart, so they're coming. So that's roughly the split. We go to maturity, and that's probably in decline, roughly there. And I've got one too many chart lines. Okay, so what, there we have it. We have the product life cycle all labeled. If I wanted to put extra notes in which I sometimes do. Again, I go into insert a text box. See, I haven't, I haven't highlighted the particular chart yet, so this is not going to work. Highlight the chart, insert text box, and uh, put your comments, whatever they're going to be relevant to your product. And often, you, again, you can format that text box in whatever way you want to to make it look attractive. So if I bring back the original one, just move that to the side, you can see basically the same thing, how it's constructed. I've got lines, I've got the stages, I've got the things, the products being placed straight away. Now I have this built as an automatic template on um, my website, which the link is below. So it's already set to go, or you can just follow this approach. All the best.